Hi, everybody. Happy Friday, everybody. It's time for Cup Chat Live. I'm Aaron. I'm joined by the, the other special A, Audrey. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing I'm doing so well. It's a beautiful day here. It's gorgeous. Good, good. It's, it's a nice day here. Fall has finally arrived here in North mm -hmm. Texas, Audrey. So it's nice and a cool 80 or so degrees here. We're doing great. Um, we're going to talk today about uh, a topic that we actually addressed this topic about a year ago. And there's a reason why we're addressing it again around this same time. Every Cub Scout pack out there, thankfully, has a lot of new adult leaders. A lot of folks have signed up for the program, and that means with it comes, comes new parents. And some of those parents have signed up to be DIN leaders and uh, committee chairs and other members of the committee and all that stuff like that. So the topic today is how do we welcome those new members? Audrey, just kind of give us a general overview of, of why this is important and why we want to talk about this today. Right. Yeah. And we did cover it about a year ago. And, and before that, we covered like how to select those leaders and, and, and um, invite those leaders. And, and that's a really good one to refresh uh, back on our archives. Thank you with the with the line there. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the reason that we do it is because it's timely. And this is just a, maybe a slightly different perspective. We had a different speaker a year ago and, and everybody's going to have maybe just a little bit of different life experience. The core is going to be the same, but but. Uh, um, so maybe you'll even have some different tips or you could compare the two, go back and listen to an archive. So mm -hmm. why we need to do it is we have data in, in, in the National Cub Scouting uh, Committee. We are very keen on, on data. And what does that say? Um, and it says that one of the, sadly, one of the biggest reasons that people would leave a den or leave Cub Scouting in general is because of poor leadership. So we want to do everything we can do to avoid that. And one is um, having a selection process, which we talked about in a previous um, a Cub Chat Live and how do you find those leaders. And then the second part is welcoming those leaders. You want that helps with retention. So you don't have, you know, the, the leader just, you know, that was stuck in a room and, and made to volunteer. And then they try one time and then they ghost you and you never see them again. That is a exactly what we don't want. Um, so we want to, to help you retain those leaders. And by doing that, you, you make a, a warm and welcoming community environment. Our data shows that when families find a sense of strong sense of community, they stay longer and they're, they're, um, the cubs enjoy it um, a, a whole lot more. And maybe when a cub is having a rough day, um, because uh, we all have rough days, then then the parents who have a sense of community go, no, we'll stick it out instead of just saying, oh, okay, let's stop. So retention is key, community building, and everybody needs to feel that they have the tools to do the job. And um, so part of that is is uh, also providing that. Yes. So as Audrey mentioned, we did talk about uh, the process of selecting a leader in a previous podcast. You can go back through our archives and listen to that. Around this time of the year, you probably have your leadership set. If not, it will be uh, very, very shortly. Um, and and that's you make a great point, Audrey. You know, uh, somebody signs up for Cub Scouts. They, they've never been. A lot of our families, they were not in scouting as youth themselves, right? They don't know that much about. They they know the Cub Scout brand, right? They want to go camping with their kids. They want their kids to be good citizens. They want to do service projects and, and, and do all that fun stuff, but they don't really know anything about the program. The worst thing that can happen is for them to volunteer to be leader and that's it. And you say, thank you. And then they're just on their own. Right. So, so right. I'll kind of tell us about that welcoming process. Uh, you know, once you've selected a leader and you feel good about it, what are some of the things we need to do as, as returning leaders? Right. And what this, I think this probably applies to, all the adults in the pack, right? Not just necessarily the cub master or the committee chair, but how we can all welcome new leaders, right? Right, absolutely. And there are also helpers out there. Some that are some helpers that are available also. Sometimes from your council, there's someone who's called a commissioner. Basically, that just means a helper. Um, and if you have a lot of new leaders, maybe you need to call in some extra help. Um, it's a model for for how to do it for you know the person that's being welcomed and and helped with these tools then that shows a good model so they can help the next leaders that are they're going to take over a new den coming in so it's just a great way to start so once you've identified and invited your leaders um then the first thing to do is that obviously they need to register and then they take uh, youth protection training and those are must do's um, and then be a, a, a registered leader, go through that process. So once they've done that, the recommendation is that you do a mentorship type program. 
so that you have um, a, an experienced volunteer come alongside them for the first several months, just so that they have a very strong uh, uh, foundation, some good modeling. It's also, you know, I, I've done the scouts, BSA and the older youth, and, and we use the method called the edge method. So you, you, you know, you explain it, you demonstrate how to do it, you guide them through it, and then you enable them to do it themselves. And that is not just words, that, that's actually a really great way to do it. Um, so, so that they have success, so they have a good model, and so they can duplicate that um, when the new leaders come on. So we re highly recommend the modeling um, through a mentorship type program. So that could be somebody from uh, that's already gone through the program and then comes back just for these two months. Maybe they can't commit to like helping the program for a whole year. That's what I was going to say. That's exactly the beginning. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, back when I was a Cub Master back in the day, Audrey, the best thing I ever did, and I didn't do that many good things, to be honest with you. But one of the <laughs> best things I did was to ask one of our uh, den leaders of a, a, a young boy who had gone up to Scouts BSA. And, I, and she said, you know, is there anything I can do to help you out for next year? And I said, well, actually there is. Maybe just stick around for the first four, five, six weeks or so and just sort mm -hmm. of help, as you said, sort of demonstrate, train for mm -hmm. the uh, new leaders who have just signed up. And uh, she was especially that, that Tiger Cub, Dan, back then. Now, Lions, we have Lions now, but back then, Tiger Cubs were always the brand new scouts, right? And right. nobody had any idea what to do, right? right. It was, it's chaos. And boy, to have a mentor like that. And hey, after, you know, by by the end of October, you're done. You've done your job. Thanks mm -hmm. so much. What a what a nice, easy helping role to fill for somebody. If somebody mm -hmm. says, hey, can I help out? That's something you can do to them. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me let me just give a few shout outs real quick. Rusty, how you, how you doing, man? Rusty from uh, PAC 92 and, uh, I'm sorry, PAC 92 and PAC 84 in Ohio. Wendy's here. I knew Wendy is the one who's both with a scout troop and a Cub Scout pack. Thank you, Wendy, for watching. Jack says, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, Jack. What's up, Omid? Thank you for watching. Always our one of our loyal viewers from Iran. Uh, Apple's watching. Ranger is watching. Uh, Rob says he knows a commissioner, guys. If anybody needs to know how to get in touch with the commissioner, Rob says he knows one. <laughs> Rob is one. Uh, uh, Wendy has done well, one. Not, of my, sadly, my, not all units are that fortunate, but but yes. they are out there in a lot. And sometimes just count, uh, contacting your council if you don't know of one, they might be able to help you find one. Yes. Uh, Wendy has done something that I always love it when our commenters do. She has tagged a friend in a comment. So love to see that. If you, if anybody else would like to tag a friend in a comment, if you think that this show would be helpful to them, please do so. And as a reminder, you know, they've missed maybe the first eight minutes and 22 seconds, but that's okay because this show will stay here on this website. Once it's done, you could always go back and watch mm -hmm. it later. We're talking about welcoming new leaders, new families who have just joined Cub Scouts. They're excited to go. They have no idea what they're doing. What can we do to help them? And as Audrey said, obviously, first, we get them registered. We get them to take youth protection training. And the idea of, of providing them with a mentor or a guide to sort of help them through that first month or two, I think is such a such a great idea. Mm -hmm. Audrey, what's next? What else can we do? Well, the next thing would be to for the mentor to help guide the, the new leader. And this could be any kind of new leader. But I think I'm going to pretty soon hone into den leaders specifically because they have uh, – maybe the most needs. Um, so it, a good place to start is to show them our national website. Um, and that is basically we have it set up and refreshed to be the one source of truth. So you're going to find a lot of, if you do searches on things, you're going to find a lot of um, other websites and maybe other councils and other things that do it a certain way. But if you want to find out what is the standard, this is the website to go to scouting.org programs Cub Scouting. And then you scroll down to, there's two buttons. One says parents and one says leaders. And it's easier to do the leaders bu uh, button. Um, it gets you right there. There is a circumvent way to get there by parents. Like it's called becoming a Cub Scout leader, but you're already a Cub Scout leader. So just go straight there. Um, and this is a great place to start so that you can show them that this is a tool that's already there and it has all the information you need there. So once you're uh, a leader, you choose your grade that you're working with if you're a den leader. So I'm gonna now transition into den leader specifically. If not, there's a committee uh, section, committee resources and um, a cub master resources section. And so you'd wanna familiarize yourself with that. But if those are usually roles that um, 
you, you've been in a little bit of time before you take. So the den leader is most likely the brand new one. And there's a little bit of sort of a, an easing in process for a committee member or something like that, right? For a den leader, you probably have a meeting next week, right? And you Possibly, need to sort yes. of get a uh, Yeah, so, so it's, it's a, it's a uh, slightly more intense onboarding process. And, yeah. and by the way, I just want to mention that website that Audrey has mentioned. That site has come a long way just in the last few years. It's undergone at least one revamp, maybe a couple, and it is very, very helpful, more mm -hmm. helpful than it was back in my day. Uh, you guys are <laughs> doing very a great hard. job with that. You guys are doing right a great now. job with that. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Go ahead, so, Audrey, yes. so for now and moving forward, uh, as things are, are, are uh, improving, continuing to improve, this would be the one place to go to to make sure you, you knew the standards. So once you hit the landing page, which I think we have a slide for, excellent. Um, we're, I just chose Wolf and Wolf and Bear are all in, in one section. So this one, you have um, some, some great resources so you can see what they look like, what the handbook looks like. Um, the the um, leader, um, workbook is um the den leader guide is a pdf and it is free so you could just can walk through that but i recommend starting with the welcome new leader uh that right there exactly uh book right and it name, is a great it? place to right start there. i know <laughs> it's there and it's ready to go <laughs> uh, um so you can go through that the kind of the how to's and what do you need to do and and the mentor can help um work through this with them as they can see all the different topics, which are, you know, everything from before your first meeting, the first month, the, um, a little bit about you as a den leader, you as the, the, what the meeting looks like, uniforming, um, what do you invest in Cub Scouts and what do you get out of Cub Scouts kind of, kind of thing, like, like the, the, you know, the bigger picture, the great, um, don't get discouraged type things, um, the encouragement things. So that's all there. Um, on that website and um, you can print it out. It has little, you know, check marks and check books that you can, you know, kind of go through each step by step. And so I really encourage the mentor to work with the DIN leader on that. If you don't have a mentor, then this is, this is a tool absolutely for you. But um, I think it's the program is enhanced with the mentor and then because you can talk back and forth over the topics. Yeah, that's great. And I want to point out one thing, you know, that you haven't heard Audrey mention really anything, um, you know, she hasn't talked about camping. She hasn't talked about high adventure bases. She hasn't talked about Eagle Scouts. She's kind of, you know, we're kind of keeping it basic, right? We're not trying, we're trying not to overwhelm them with too much information. Uh, right. And simple. I would keep your dialogue to real people talk, as I call it, yeah, you know, try yeah, not to yeah. use as much scout, scout ease yes. as possible because that can scare parents so and they easy. think it's overwhelming and it's really not. It's, right. it's, but it's so um, easy so, to forget that, like, they don't might not even know what what den am I leading again? I mean, that's a very common I question. Exactly. When, so when, when we have found the grade, up, yes, we had the grade their, had the name, yes. but really it is, exactly. you know, second grade, third grade, whatever it is. Um, you can what's, keep it very simple so it doesn't feel overwhelming. What's the difference between a den and a pack? I mean, people ask that question all the time. Right. So all of these kind of basics. Right are a great way to and start. Our small group, our pack is when our small groups get together. Yep. You can use real people talk yeah. to, to it. Uh, and I would encourage that for the first As a matter of fact, that's probably <laughs> bit of time. It, yes, exactly. <laughs> We've got more people uh, tagging their friends. Great job, guys. Appreciate that. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Colleen. Quick shout out to Corey. Corey actually had a, a very nice thing to say about us. I appreciate your kind comment. Corey also tagged a friend there. Uh, Andrea, who's watching on YouTube, says they're a Cub Master and they just sent links to the rank specific DIN leader page, page to all their DIN leaders. Thank That's you very it. much, Andrea. Good job. That's, That's what we're here for. And, yes. And you know, it's a great refresh. And especially if you're maybe if you're changing grades, maybe there's something slightly different, uh, especially if you're changing from the younger ages to the older ages. If you're in the Lions and Tigers, that's a you, you know an adult partner situation where you move into the wolf and the bears. It's it's a single den leader situation with maybe some assistance. Um, and so and the older ones have some very the the Weeblos has some very um, different things. So so it's just it's a good refresh, even yep. if you already are an experienced den leader. Yeah, absolutely. And Audrey has talked quite a bit about uh, having a mentor, which is great. You know, uh, a, a fellow DIN leader could could also help serve as a mentor. Maybe right. they can't be there. You know, if you're all meeting at the same time, right, they may have their own DIN, but that's a great place to go to to ask questions. And uh, one of the, I think, the, the messages that Audrey and I would like to get out today is that if you're a current, DIN, no matter what you're doing, if you're a current DIN leader, current leader, 
you know, please have an open ear, right? And, and, and be, be open and, uh, and friendly and kind and courteous and all that stuff. And keep in mind, uh, yeah, uh, what's a tiger den? What's a wolf den? These are the kind of questions they're going to have. Right, so. right. And, and as I said, this is one perspective. And a year ago, um, Anthony spoke on it. And so he might have had a slightly different perspective. So, so you, you're diff- your mentors and your different folks in your, in your pack are, may have different ways to do it. I mean, the, the thing is the same is that you must keep them safe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you, you should be working on advancing them through the program. Um, but how the hows are, can be very different um, from person to person. You might get some great tips. So the mentor, I would also encourage starting to give some additional resources. This is a good place to start. But the next thing that I would give them is something called our resource sheet. Um, and it is a sheet which we've talked about on its own well, <laughs> um, come chat all by itself. But uh, it's a great thing to have in your back pocket or really honestly, I ask everybody to take a picture of it on your phone. So it's ready to go and you don't you don't lose it. You don't have to look it up again because it's a tiny bit obscure of finding it down on the website. (laughs) But um, here's the QR code to it. And I recommend keeping this and then it has it right there. So this gives you ongoing resources, right? So the the workbook is the place to start. The website then is an ongoing resource. It has a whole resource section. We continually update it with any new policies and things like that that are coming, any new program changes that might be coming. Um, we have our the, the link to Cub Chat Live because Cub Chat Live, we try to make agile in that uh, it's responsive to uh, needs we hear about or find out about or just the time of year. So we keep um, these topics uh, a very short schedule so that we can add anything we need in um, to, to help um, help our audience better, our, our, our Cub leaders. And I love the uh, fact that first, Cub Chat Live is on there. Look how far we've come. Audrey, Cub Chat Live is right there on the research yeah, It's exactly, exactly. It's, a, it's a vital <laughs> channel of communication. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that people don't think about is uh, the uh, virtual roundtables. Uh, we encourage, um, that's you know kind of down the road, we encourage you to go to a roundtable if you are a new leader. There are sections for each, uh, often there are sections for each kind of leader. Um, and um, it has, um, you know, new and upcoming resources to focus on. And, and it's also a community, right? So that somebody can exchange ideas with, with each other on how to do things. But if you're unable to attend at that time, or you just want to go back, there are roundtable videos that are posted that anybody can, can listen to. And it has great meets. They're, they're short. I think there's six to eight minutes ish right around there um, varies by the topic, but it's a short snippet on, on an, on a topic. And so that's a great resource to kind of look, look back on and, and do it. And then there we have some online resources, um, scout book. I recommend uh, the, the mentor help them walk through how to do scout book for advancement and so on. And also then there's training. So once you, become a den leader, um, the first things you should be doing are, is your um, leader specific training. And they're very short modules. You can do them like, I believe they're around eight to 10 minutes. You can do each model module and, uh, and pace yourself and work through your advancement as you have time, your um, leader required specific training. And that is a requirement to be a leader is to go through that training. Yeah. So um, that is a quick, and then the apps, the apps, there's a scout book app. And um, so they're, they're very helpful information to have. So the, the mentor should help walk you through just what I just said, really. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and so that you can always have that. And then you as a, as a new leader have that on your phone and you can reference it, but you can also share it with other new leaders because um, it's, it's just a very helpful tool. Yeah. And all these things, speaking of things that have come a long way, uh, when I first became a DIN leader, Audrey, and I bet you experienced something similar. I was handed over a binder that I swear was 500 pages long. And I think it's sitting yeah, in this closet right over here. <laughs> and I don't think I ever opened it. Uh, but but boy, the, the, the roundtable videos, um, optional, but extremely helpful. Uh, training uh, is required. Uh, also extremely helpful, but, you know, easy and short and very simple mm-hmm. uh, with people explaining it in, in terms that everybody can understand. Thank goodness we have that kind of thing mm-hmm. available for our our brand new leaders these days, uh, a super, super uh, convenient resource. Right. So, and this is something we've produced at the National Committee recently. So this is a, a, a newer tool and uh, will be updated as some of our resources are updated. Uh, the next thing that I would recommend the mentor uh, give them is their, our advancement um, sheet. It's an at-a-glance advancement sheet. 
And this helps you to, like you said, all the words in the book and all the yep. words in the manual, it can be kind of overwhelming. So this is an at a glance. So if I am a wolf leader, I know these are the things I have to do. I do bobcat first. Then I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, um, adventures. And then I have an elective adventure and then I'm done. So I really can plan um, fairly easily. And it doesn't look so overwhelming when you look at the size of the, you know, the, the, the handbook, it, it feels like that's a lot. Yes. So um, this I, I believe is very handy for folks to be able to see at a glance what it is. And there's a QR code straight to the, to the requirements chart or the rate chart. And um, it spells it all out as the older grades, you can see that they are, they have a few more steps to do right now. And so um, this is helpful at a glance. And so I recommend um, that the mentor go over this with them. So it doesn't feel so overwhelming. You're like, look, we're a lion. We only have, you know, five things to do. Yeah. And, and, um, and uh, our youth protection, our, our child safety videos. So um, that's, that's uh, another chart that is um, newer. And so we recommend everybody use this. And again, it will be updated as we have different updates coming down the road. And I want to point out that behind the scenes, Brian is posting links in the comments Appreciate to all of the that. files that we're showing. Good job, Brian. Mm -hmm. He just posted a link to the uh, at a glance requirements charts. Before that, he posted a link to the resource Cub Scout res leader resource overview. Um, and before that, also Din leader resources. All those. Just scroll back mm -hmm. in the comments, guys. All those links have been posted. Thank you for doing that, Brian. Yeah, all this stuff is very convenient, and especially that chart. If we could talk about that for just a few more seconds. Um, right, and there is a Cub Chat Live on that that goes into uh, full detail on it because I, I know we're the time is getting away. But they, yep. but so, so so look up the archives for those either both of those charts so that you can um, hear me talk a lot longer. About <laughs> yes. <it>. Expand on <laughs> that. Well, detail. I love I love that chart because, like you say, it does break it down into bite sized pieces, and it does make you realize mm -hmm. that you know it's it's not difficult to it's go through not overwhelming the requirements though. at all. No, yes. if you look at it like that, if you get, yes. like you said, a big manual or yes. a big handbook, you as a new den leader coming in there or a new leader, it goes, whoa, right. I only have so much time. How am I going to get all this done? This feels overwhelming. I don't know that I can do it. Yeah. And um, this goes, oh no, look, you can. It's exactly. just boom, boom, boom. We'll just, we'll just pop this in the calendar. And so that's another thing that I recommend the, the, the uh, mentor, help with is have some preset den meetings for the first uh, couple months, maybe even the first three months, mm -hmm. um, have a preset package just ready to go for them. So you, so they're like, okay, this is where we start. We do, you know, we're going to do two meetings on this or one meeting on that. And so they, they don't have to worry about that planning right the bit out of the gate and they're able to, then the mentor comes alongside them as they're, they're planning um, the details of those meetings. So, um, uh, so they gain confidence. So you, you educate them on what needs to happen. You demonstrate how to do it. Then you start backing away as a mentor and, and let them do it, but you're kind of still giving input and then you fully release, you know, it's like your children as they yep. graduate. And just the birds just fly out of the nest. They're My children, they, exactly. You go out of the, out of the nest and that is the goal is that they then are able to do it successfully on their own. They still have a resource for questions, but if, if this successful pattern happens, it's very short, the helping time, but it is critical. That is a great idea. And I, we could do a whole a show, an entire show about a lot of the different things we talk about, but Audrey, I think we should do a, do a show on, on the mentor. And, and how what a valuable role that could be if your uh, child has just recently, or heck, if your child is still in, in, in Cub Scouts, uh, just to volunteer to help out for a few mm -hmm. months in the fall. What a huge uh, need that would fill, I think. Something to think about. Uh, for right. It could be a past leader who had to step away yep. because of other time commitments, but they could do a short time. Could be a grandparent that's gone through the program. Could be could be even those commissioners. Could even be somebody in your true in a troop that you're uh, come back um, feeds to because they want you to have success. They want right. you to, you know, get up through the older age so that there's, they come into your troop. Right. So exactly. um, yeah, there might be Perfect. other helpers out there. Mm -hmm. So once we get them to where they're basically, our new leaders are ready to fly, spread their wings uh, and just soar throughout their community doing Cub Scout stuff. Uh, what what is kind of the final advice that we leave them? There's still a few things they can do to sort of continue their journey, right, Audrey? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, absolutely. So then I think it's the time to start talking about advanced training. I would not talk about advanced training when they're first starting. That's that's like overwhelming. So, uh, uh, but they need to know as they're moving along that there are other resources out there to support them. And so, and the way that that's handled and it helps is to go to some of the advanced training and that gives you more confidence that you know what you're doing. So things like Baloo, the, the outdoor, basic outdoor um, leader training, it gives you confidence to, to um, be able to, to go out into the outdoors uh, with your scouts and in a pack environment and family camping. And, and that's a whole nother layer, but that's too much when they're right at the beginning. But then encourage them to go to that. Um, your council or district may offer those certain times of the year. And um, that's a great advanced training. Roundtables, I, I touched on already, but that I would repeat because they're not going to remember it. They just like maybe will remember that there are some videos that might help them right. to, to learn about different things. But, you know, mention it again. Roundtable is a gathering around a table. Uh, so it's meant to be like an open exchange where a topic is discussed and then leaders get together and, and share their wisdom is a great place to go, whether it's a virtual, partial virtual, um, uh, or in person. So you can get that interaction on topics and just to gain a little bit more confidence. Maybe your, um, debt and management is a little bit of a struggle for you. So there's some, some people there who are going to know how some tips and tricks on how to do that. Uh, the, our website actually also has some tips and tricks on various different things. So look under those resource uh, tabs again. Um, and refresh yourself because you, it, when you first see things, you don't remember everything, right? Nobody does. You need mm -hmm. repeated times to, in order to actually remember something. And I think it's five to seven times. It's it's uh, it's actually quite a lot to it's remember. more so. than that for me. But yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> and that might be individual. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll have council events that uh, you can take part in. Again, right up front, it's going to be overwhelming and I wouldn't recommend that, but maybe a little bit down the line, maybe mm -hmm. your council has a, a camp Halloween, like our, our council does, where um, cubs go and just enjoy some of the things that you can't do in a den meeting. Um, and uh, it's, it's a fantastic time. And then they have um, a spring event and things like that so that you can um, enjoy it with other cubs in a richer environment than you might be able to provide. Um, often you might not be able to provide boats and you cannot provide BBs and guns and things like that. So um, those are restricted to council and district level activities. So those it's kinds it, of things enhance. That's exactly the kind of information that we don't want to hit them with early, right? Right, right. They're it's too much. Right. It's this after, like after they've flown a bit. These are things exactly. to talk about. And then, exactly. you know, the, uh, one of the higher level things is, is actually wood badge training. Um, but definitely would not lead with that on a brand new leader. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, mm -hmm. but you get lots of great, um, training and skills and interaction and tips. So we, we can. And I think, in fact, we have done shows all about round tables in general. Yeah. Rob says, go to round table. It helped me tremendously. Uh, I agree mm -hmm. round table. I mean, talk, you're just, a, you're, you're, you're going to, into a room full of people who want to help you, right? You're all doing the same thing together. Uh, a great way to ask questions, share ideas, and to find out what's going on in mm -hmm. your usually a district, I think, right? In right. Your, and, in your area. and we should talk in real people terms. Like, okay. so, so like a district is a, a, a local gathering with right. say maybe a, an area that has maybe five different school districts or five different schools in, mm -hmm. in that area, not districts, five different <laughs> grade schools. Um, and then a, a, a council would be your larger area, your larger metropolitan area or larger area, which is the, the, the central gathering for these things. So I would use terms like that. Yep, because eventually we'll work our ways into districts and councils. But when families first come in, they they don't understand that's and that seems overwhelming. So talk, use real people talk, and mm -hmm. um, get them there. Yes. Uh, Todd says hi from Troop Six Hundred One in Farmingdale, New York. Todd, you're about twenty nine minutes late today. It's okay. <laughs> we forgive you. It's okay. You can always go back hello, right from the beginning. It's fine, Todd. It's fine. Uh, Audrey, great discussion today. I want to close it out. Let's let's wrap it up the same way we started it. Uh, what we know is that people sometimes quit Cub Scouts because they don't hear back, they, poor leader, poor DIN leadership, right? They, mm -hmm. It's not well organized. They don't have any DIN meetings, things like that. Welcoming mm -hmm. DIN leaders is one of the best things we can do to prevent that from happening, right? To make sure that DIN leader is uh, armed with all the knowledge and guiding, guidance and mentorship and things like that that they need 
uh, to do what it is that they volunteered to do. Um, Audrey, any final thoughts? What else would we need to let our viewers know? Right. It's it's actually quite critical. And it's critical for the families, too, that they need to, to feel welcomed, appreciated. I mean, everybody needs to feel welcomed and appreciated and the sense of community that you're there to help them, that they're not an island all on their own. And um, so everything you can do in your pack to provide that kind of environment is is going to make your pack successful. Um, and we highly recommend the mentor model um, as the way to go to do that. Um, and that might take some creativity in your area, depending on your resources on who that mentor is. Um, but we highly encourage you looking into, into that model to, to um, help retain retention of your leaders and retention of your families. Because as, as you just said, one of the number one reasons people leave is poor leadership. If they haven't heard or communicated from a den, got communication from a den leader, um, the meetings aren't happening. Why did I join Cub Scouts? It's, I'm not having Cub Scouts. So um, everything you can do to make that positive um, helps with retention and the experience um, that we're trying to provide to these scouts is to help them grow is is good citizens physically fit leadership and character development um, and that can't happen if we don't have meetings and dens and to working through the the program and and uh once again as you often do audrey you said something that that sparked something in my brain uh having an creating an opening welcoming environment um mm -hmm. boy, a lot of problems can be solved if we all just work to have make sure our unit has an opening, welcoming environment. And I'm, I always, you know, you run into people sometime and, and, and maybe that's not their thing and that's okay, but there's somebody else in your pack who can do that. So if you're mm -hmm. not the one who's the greeter, right? Who, who's, who's being the one who, who welcomes everybody, that's okay. As long as there's somebody to do that, as long as there's a mentor right. or somebody there right. to welcome them, let them know that we appreciate what they're doing and to be mm -hmm. there to answer any questions for them. Mm -hmm. Right, because we all have just the same amount of time, and if, yep. if we don't feel that, we will we will take our feet and walk elsewhere. So um, mm -hmm. th th it's actually more important than you know. So yep, yep. Uh, great discussion. Great job in the comments, everybody. Appreciate all you all you folks who tagged your friends today. A lot of people tagged in the comments there. That's great. Love to see that. Uh, great discussion as always. Audrey, hope you enjoy your weekend. I uh, <laughs> hope everybody watching from home enjoys their weekend as well. We'll see everybody next Friday on Cub Chat Live. See you, Excellent. Audrey. Bye, everybody. All right, take care. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to catch next week's episode. Same time, same place. And let us know how we're doing at go.scoutingmagazine.org slash rate Cub Chat. We love feedback and ideas for new episodes. And you can visit blog.scoutingmagazine.org slash Cub Chat Live for all our past video episodes. You can see us live, except it's recorded, but it was live. Okay, see you next week.